might be fun exercise of saying like, what are the main positions and submissions in the art of jujitsu? You don't have to be complete. That's a ridiculously, I apologize for putting you on the no, spot no, no. like this, but it might be a nice exercise to think through it. Sure. I mean, I would just say that there, are, there are, you have your arms bend in various ways. You have key lock, Americana, straight arm locks, kimura, omoplata. Omoplata is a kimura, kimura is an omoplata. It's just That's executed. Submissions. So like submissions, yes. Breaking also, off your arm in right. all kinds of ways. But ultimately, it, the question is, let's say you were a Terminator, like a robot that I, which of course you are. Go uh, on. Then go on. <laughs> it's like, all right, so we're, we're being completely literal. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, and I and I couldn't harm you with any of these things. Would I still use these positions? The answer is yes. They, they create leverage, they create control, they create shapes that I can affect and that can affect me and they can be affected through other forces and other objects or structures like the ground or the wall. I really enjoy mixed martial arts because there's another component rather than just me and you and the floor, there's me, you, the floor, and the wall. And it's another player in the game that doesn't exist uh, in a grappling context with an, uh, in a non-enclosed, you know, I guess, area of combat. But um, you can strangle me or choke me, um, what do you call it, uh, without my arms being involved, or you can use one of my shoulders to pin one side of my one carotid artery off and you can enclose the other. You can turn my knee in the exact same ways that you can turn my arm straight this way and that way. You can add a rotation to that or it can be directly linear against the joint. So I guess what I would say is the more that I've been able to understand jujitsu, the more that I've been, it's, it's given me an, a, a look into how we learn language where rather than learning five bazillion adjectives, I go, I understand what an adjective is. And of course we are all read into some degree of, of vocabulary. I understand what an adverb does. And I understand what an adverb is. I know what a noun is. I know what the component parts of a sentence are. I know what, a, you know, I guess a clause, a contraction, any of these things. And it allows you to be um, interesting and artistic with your language to the extent that you can. But I can't, like, I can speak a degree of Spanish, but I'm not even slightly artistic in Spanish. I would be something, I'd be, I speak like a, like a child with a head injury. And anyway, um, the, the but your I, basic understanding of the English language allows you to then be a student of Spanish. 100%, but I'm limited by my experience. I'm limited by my understanding of techniques. And I'm limited under, by my understanding, almost like, let's say techniques are like these, are like vocabulary. Um, so even if I kind of sort of grasp the sentence structure and the thought process and the thought patterns of, of Spanish, which it's interesting because just even the, the orientation and the organization of a language, and I've thought about this a great deal, um, you know, the way that I perceive the world is affected deeply by the language that I learned. You know, the, again, if I learned, I have no idea how the Chinese language structures, but I can only imagine that it would be, that it would affect, it's like a different lens. We're all looking at the same thing, but I have, I have a different set of sunglasses on than you do. Um, and, uh, that's that's very very interesting. I'll use the Quran as an example. You know, apparently it's it's unbelievably poetic and in Arabic, it's still neat and and was interesting reading in English. But I'm told by people that I trust that it it just one doesn't bear a resemblance to the other. And I think that's a very interesting thing that you may be able to say the same thing, but in in a more, in, I guess in a different way, in a more artistic way that that may not translate on a one for one kind of fidelity. But um, the more that we're able to understand about how the body works, the more examples of the body working this way, the body working that way, the body working that way, the more that I'm able to eventually become an artist. But it has to be studied as a science first. And it does start with technique collection, vocabulary collection, the same way we learn in school. You remember how to say quickly 17 different ways. And let's say I speak Spanish. I'm only, I, I only know three. So you might use quickly, you might use an adjective like quickly in Spanish, but use one of the many, many options to describe that, that I don't understand. And now I sit there and go like, wait, what? I can't be artistic. I can't be as organic with the language as I'd like. So I believe that jujitsu a lot of times starts with the acquisition of a lot of, hey, do this, this, this drill, this technique. Here's an Americana, Americana to an arm lock, arm lock to a triangle. Um, but the problem with that is oftentimes we get stuck in that phase. Um, and I, people eventually become move collectors or sequence collectors. And I notice this when I'm trying to do DVD or I guess like an instructional series now, or even teaching in class, I, I don't believe in that form of learning anymore. Um, not that it's not valuable, but I, I don't believe, like, I don't understand jujitsu on that level anymore. So what I'm trying to do is get across the basic ideas to people and say, hey, you need to fill in the gaps with going to class all the time. You need to go, hey, learn this move, learn that technique, learn that technique, because otherwise I'm basically just throwing at you like 75 different words that you could use, but that hasn't really taught you how to how to 
speak a language. Whereas if you give me the language structure, you can fill in these pieces on your own and then eventually speak organically in Lex form, which will be ultimately unique to you because otherwise you just end up being like a weird facsimile of whatever it is that I'm doing for mostly the worst, I'd say. But uh, yeah, that's what people, I mean, people comment like, is this, especially people who haven't listened to me before, uh, is this guy drunk or high? Does he, does, does MIT really allow slow people to, uh, <laughs> to be like, Quotas. what's wrong? <laughs> Quotas, <yeah. laughs> like, what's, what's wrong with him? Is he getting sleep? Are you okay? Does he need help? So that, that's similar with my jujitsu. It's like, does, is this guy, is this guy really, whatever rank I was throughout, I, I remember just like, is this guy really this rank? I just have a very kind of certain way of sitting and being slow and lazy looking that there was ultimately the language that I had to discover. And it was, uh, it was, yeah, it was a very liberating moment, I think, of probably a few years of getting my ass kicked, especially with Open Guard and Butterfly to where you really allow yourself to take in the entirety of the language and realize that, um, that I'm not, I'm different, I'm a unique, I, I'm, I'm unique. And like, I have a very, um, I have a language, I have a set of techniques, a way I move my body that needs, to, that I'm the one to discover. Like it's, you can only, you can learn specific techniques and so on, but you really have to understand your own body. And that's the beautiful thing about jujitsu, like you said, is like the, the connection about your philosophy, your view of the world with the physical and like connecting those two things, how you perceive the world, how you interpret ideas of the world about exhaustion, about force, about effortlessness, like what it really means to relax, all these kinds of loose concepts, and then actually teach your body to like do those things. And like, you know, and be able to apply force in spurts, be able to relax in spurts and like figure all that stuff out for my, for your, my individual body. But it's a, as you mentioned, that's I couldn't agree with you more. It's a discovery process and no one can cheat that process, which is at the same time, it's almost like imagine I wanna start writing books in second grade, unless maybe I'm like staggeringly brilliant, like, which I can only conceptualize someone being able to do that, but maybe a Mozart of the English language where you're out there doing it. But for most of us, we don't have enough knowledge, enough information, enough experience to be able to be, to express ourselves. So we have to basically input, repeat, um, which is important, but it's the process, as you say, of going through that, of getting your ass kicked, of just like, well, that didn't work, well, that didn't work, that felt right, but I don't know, nobody else does that, I guess I don't believe in that, versus eventually going, I don't know, I'll just try going my own way and see what happens, and now I'll get yelled at, and people won't like me, and if it works, they'll say I got lucky, and if it doesn't work, they'll say I was dumb, but, uh, which maybe all is right, but basically, uh, you know, going through that iterative process that that allows you to eventually find your self expression and find your voice, so that you you fight the same way that you speak, the same way that you write, the same way that you think, in a way that that is uniquely you. That will also ultimately allow you to understand other people being uniquely them. Because even if you can only conceptualize, and I think about this a lot for society stuff, where I go, "Well, this is how I feel about this," but oh, am I objectively right? Maybe about a couple of things, but that's a small box that I have to be very, very careful about what I think is objective and versus what's not. And I have to be open to the possibility that all the things that I think are objectively correct may or may not be. And that should allow me to have some degree of compassion or consideration for other people, both in their martial arts journey and in their, in their journey, you know, as, as people, as human beings, because I understand that they're on a, it, it's a, we're all on a path where it's all, a, an, again, an iterative process of, of eventual self-expression. But I think that's one of the things that we see having trouble when we see tribalism, which I mean, racism expression of that, political affiliation expression of that, all of these things that can go in really uncomfortable directions. People are looking for, hey, where do I plant my feet over here? Where's where's the, the thing that I know is right? And we can all agree on the following. And I, I think that we see that in martial arts. We're like, oh, I do this style. Well, I do that style. I do that style. It's like, hey, man, we're all just pushing forward in a certain direction here, trying to do our best. And I understand why you feel the way you do. I may have felt like that at one point too. But, uh, you know, we're, we're, I'm just trying to learn and understand versus I've already acquired enough knowledge. Let me cross my arms and start to to look who's fucking up around here. Yeah. And and I think that uh, th that's an – it's a – interesting trap that I think is a very human trap to fall into, but it definitely happens early on. It's, I mean, it's a joke in the jiu-jitsu world, right? Like, oh, the blue belt that, that knows everything. Well, yeah. initially it's like, what, I know nothing and I at least think I know nothing. Then I'd learn a little bit and I think it's a lot bit. 
And then, you know, the more you learn, the more you go like, I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. 